I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the causes of niacin deficiency. So now you know what the symptoms are. Let's talk about some of the causes. One of them is alcoholism. And so alcohol will definitely contribute to a loss of niacin. Alcohol also is a gastric irritant. So you, you, know, you deplete the vitamin that's necessary to retain the integrity of the GI tract, but then you're adding a toxin that can damage the GI tract. This is why we see alcoholics are, are you know, a, as a general rule, much more prone to developing of niacin. Now, I wanted to give you a history lesson here because a lot of, a lot of books will say that grains are a great food source um, for niacin. The problem with grain is the niacin is poorly, it's very, it's very low bioavailability. This is very hard to get to that niacin. And what happens, and so like, again, history lesson, the existence, meaning that surviving on maize, which is corn, and surviving on sorghum, which is another grain, and although technically they, they like to call sorghum gluten-free, technically it's not gluten-free, but, but again, existence on maize or sorghum diets and loss of failure to isolate niacin from them led to pellagra incidents in India, South Africa, Southern Europe, okay, and in the USA following the Civil War. is actually one of the reasons we know so much about niacin was because post-Civil War in the South, uh, a lot of the food was either, was either like... Um, your grain, your cereals, like your grits, your corn, right, or gravy, wheat. And so it was a, a huge grain subsistence post-Civil War. You know, there was famine, uh, there was poverty post-Civil War. And so some really smart physicians picked up on that, and they, they started to isolate and identify that there was a B3 deficiency, and a big part of it was grain-based foods. For This is actually part of it, that grain, by law, has to be fortified if you're buying packaged grain, it has to be fortified or they, they can't sell it. It's illegal to sell it if it's not fortified. Why? Well, this is one of the reasons why, pellagra. Because grain would cause niacin deficiency. It would also cause vitamin B1 deficiency and lead to the disease beriberi. So these two diseases were responsible for, oh, roughly 8,000 deaths a year. And a lot of hospitalizations and a lot of illness. So that is why we have fortification laws. When you pick up a box of cereal or a loaf of bread, you'll always see, always, you'll see niacin on the label. Have to. You'll see thiamine, thiamine, which is vitamin B1. You'll see niacin and thiamine. Those two will be on every single package because it's illegal to sell them because grain was so toxic it was responsible for more than 8,000 deaths a year. A lot of people don't realize that about our history, but uh, it's very, very true and very, very sad. Uh, and this is one of the reasons, not, not the only reason why I'm, I'm a proponent of a grain-free diet, but one of the very, very big ones is that, that the, the aspects of vitamins within those grains is very poorly available, bioavailable, especially when we're talking about processed foods, processed grains. So let's talk about food. Actually, let's back up just a minute. Before I dive into this food, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty relatively easy. Let's talk about causes of niacin deficiency as well. So let's change the color, make it more visible for you. Causes of niacin or vitamin B3 deficiency. So we mentioned alcohol already. So... What else? There's a number of different medicines that can cause vitamin B3 deficiency. Antibiotics um, is, a, is a class of medicine. And, and um, tuberculosis antibiotics, so any of those of you who ever had to take isoniazid, which is a tubercula, anti-tuberculosis medicine, causes uh, vitamin B3 deficiency. We also know that um, anti... Sorry... Antacids, they reduce stomach acid. We need acid to absorb niacin. So antacids, so if you're popping Tums, Rolaids, uh, drugs like that, 
you know, you got to be careful because you're going to induce potentially increase the risk of developing this type of deficiency. And then we also have ladies, BCP, right? Estrogen. Estrogen will burn through um, and help to deplete not just B3. It also does that to B2, B6, magnesium, and zinc. But uh, estrogen can cause. So if you're on a prescription estrogen medication, you know, you, you, if you're on any of these things and you're on them for good reasons, although I, I would argue um, the reasons, but again, that's between you and your doctor. But if you're on them, you need to check. You need to have this measured. You need to have this checked because a lot of these same diseases that cause these types of symptoms or, the, or that require the drugs to treat. So again, let's go back and look at this for a minute. So if you're having constant digestive problems, oftentimes doctors will pull out antibiotics and say, oh, you must have a stomach bug, let's treat it with antibiotics, right? And if it's not a stomach bug and if it's really a niacin deficiency and they put you on an antibiotic and it makes your niacin deficiency worse, what have you just done? Same thing with anxiety. A lot of doctors will, will write prescription drugs and you know sometimes with anxiety, depression, or mood swings, they'll use estrogen, right? The females, if you're having menstrual complaints and things of that nature that are accompanied by those types of symptoms, estrogen is a common prescription given when you're having those kinds of symptoms. And that also, again, that what if it's not necessarily that as a problem? What if it's vitamin B3 deficiency leading to those symptoms? And so now you're on a drug that's leading to a deficiency of the nutrient, that deficiency that's causing you to actually feel the way that you're feeling. So we could really draw correlations around the board for many of these different symptoms. That's my point. This is why, you know, look, I'm of the opinion that medicine doesn't solve chronic problems. Medicine can solve acute problems. If you have an acute fulminant infection that's going to go, you know, and hit your bloodstream and kill you, take the antibiotic. But if you've got heartburn because you eat like garbage, you know, there's no justification or reason to pump antacids into you because you're just going to continue to feel like garbage, but you're going to create more problems. Same thing here. If you've got hormone imbalance because you eat poorly, because you have bad lifestyle choices or habits, and you don't, you don't even know that there's a correlation because your doctor didn't spend that time, right? Remember, this, this is not going to solve your problem. These passive drugs don't solve anybody's problem. They, they just mask the symptoms and give you a false sense of security. And so really, if you want your health back, you, you, have, to take, you have to take proactive action to, to understand these things, and, you, and you've got to get educated, and you've got to have more meaningful conversations with your doctor or find doctors that will. Okay, let's talk about some of the food sources. Non-grain-based, right? So again, important that we're delineating the best gluten and grain-free sources of niacin. You can see by far on the top here is meat, seafood, beef, chicken, turkey, lamb, salmon, tuna, shrimp, sardines. And then, you know, for those of you who are following a vegetarian diet, I've, I've tried to list some really good sources down here for you as well. Okay, so mushrooms, asparagus, bell peppers, sweet potatoes, sunflower seeds, sesame seeds, and almonds. So no matter who you are, you've got some good options here, again, to get lots of niacin from your diet. Remember, the best place to get any nutrient is from the food that we eat. The problem in today's world is most of the food that we eat is contaminated with antibiotics, contaminated with, um, you know, with pesticides, which act as antibiotics. And, you know, in addition to that, the food oftentimes is not organic. It's highly processed. And in the processing, a lot of the nutrients are destroyed. And so we're left with something of a skeleton of, of what the food could have provided nutritionally. And so, again, when you're going at food-based sources to get your nutrients, it's important that it's real food, right? Not processed because I can tell you this if you buy you know chicken lunch meat that's you know this basically adhered or stuck together using meat glue that's not going to be as nutrient dense as eating a real chicken like a fresh baked chicken um, so again it's not processed is the key word so you know again same thing with your beef if you're going over to taco you know, the taco place, you know, the place that has great F meat, right? And most of it's not really meat, but it's other stuff. That's, that's processed. That's not going to help you get, get this to any great degree. So again, not processed is the way that you want to think about it. Remember what you fuel your body with is how your body responds. So when you put garbage in, you get garbage out. It's a general rule. It's what we call a non-negotiable rule of nutrition. You, you can't expect to get good health by putting bad things in. Hey, don't forget to check out 
the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.